So let's look at the lyrics, if we could, of Eleanor Rigby. Now, the Beatles were ahead of their time in so many different ways. I mean, the Beatles, John Paul, George, Ringo, they knew <laughs> what was going on with women. They understood it. I mean, they were getting so much ass, they didn't even know what to do. I read an interview uh, or listened to an interview with George uh, Harrison. And he was like, oh, yeah, 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 we'd go to some town and there'd be half a dozen chicks <laughs> or a dozen w women waiting for us when we got to the hotel room. I mean, it was ridiculous, right? I mean, these guys were the biggest band in the world. And getting women was nothing. It was easy. And eventually, the lads settled down. Paul McCartney went for Linda East Eastman. Yes, she was the uh, Kodak Eastman uh, heiress. And uh, George traded wives with Eric Clapton. John Lennon, of course, went for Yoko Ono. Don't know anything about Ringo. I don't know what uh, the deal is with Ringo. But he could sing Yellow Submarine, so I'm sure he's got... Uh, or he did have plenty. So the Beatles had a lot of experience with women. You know, by the time they got into the uh, the mid-60s, they, they, they knew the freaking score. And they wrote a few songs about women. I mean, there were some love songs like Norwegian Wood. There was uh, a bunch of stuff, right? About, you know, the sappy sort of blue pill stuff. But then you come across songs like Ticket to Ride. It's like, whoa, that's fucking red pill, dude. Whoa, <laughs> that is solid freaking red pill stuff. Also, there's another one and I can't think of it. Oh, things we said today. Yeah, red pill. Paul McCartney and John Lennon knew what was going to happen. They, these guys were 20, right? 21 years old. They knew it. They knew it was going to happen. They had spent many years in Hamburg, Germany, right? They were playing you know, five, six, seven, eight, you know, uh, sets a night and the chicks and uh, you know the game, right? If you're a musician, you get it. You know, basically the women throw themselves at you for a cheap high, you could say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy's in a band. He can play the guitar. The Beatles took advantage <laughs> of that uh, nature of women uh, because this was right sort of during the sexual revolution, and John Paul George and Ringo said, hmm, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, hey, you want to be sexually free? I'll give you some of that. So Eleanor Rigby, let me read you some of these words. Eleanor Rigby picks up the rice in a church where a wedding has been, lives in a dream, waits at the window, wearing the face that she keeps in the jar by the door. Who is it for? My guess would be... Eleanor Rigby was post-wall at this point. You know, she wasn't that redhead that Paul went out with. <laughs> what the hell was her name? Oh, my God. Damn. Eleanor Rigby left all her chances to be happily coupled or what have you for whatever she did. We don't know, right? It's a mystery. That's what great music, I think, does. There's, There's... Some assumptions left to the listener. So I would guess Eleanor Rigby had her chances and she didn't take them until it was too late. The lyrics continue. Father Mackenzie, which by the way, Paul wanted to say Father McCartney. <laughs> one of those Beatles things if you're aware of that. Father Mackenzie writing the words of a sermon that no one will hear. No one comes near. Look at him working darning his socks in the night when there's nobody there. Well, why does he care? So they might be looking at both sides of it, right? Father Mackenzie couldn't marry if he was Catholic and all that stuff. See, he's lonely too. But it's not titled Father Mackenzie, is it? It's titled Eleanor Rigby. Eleanor Rigby died in the church and was buried along with her name. Nobody came. Father Mackenzie wiping the dirt from his hands as he walks from the grave. No one was saved. Remember, these guys were 22, 23. You know, they, they were young men. And Paul McCartney and John Lennon and the rest of the, uh, the lads came up with this stuff. It's like, well, how did you know this? How did you know this was going to happen? We understand Father Mackenzie is going to be lonely. He's dedicated himself to God. But Eleanor Rigby, 
It's not Sister Eleanor Rigby, is it? No. It's just Eleanor Rigby. And this is what happens. The women don't want to hear it. I can do what I want when I'm young, and when I'm ready, I'm going to find Prince Charming. Maybe. Yeah, possible. Sure. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. But in general, you can have all the fun you want. You're free. Do whatever you want. But if you get past a certain point, you're going to be like Eleanor Rigby, who died alone in the church with a bunch of cats. Now, a lot of people come at me and say, well, Hamster, you just hate women. You, you, you hate them. You know you do. No, I don't. I don't want anyone to be lonely. I don't want anyone to you know, feel sad because time has passed them by. I don't want that for anyone. Even women. Now, some men are going to be out there saying, ah, oh, women suck. What a bird at that. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not like that, okay? It's not me. I want you to be happy. Whatever you choose in your life, I hope you're happy. If you want to be happy, and that happiness involves getting married to a decent dude and having a family and all that shit, you can't wait till you're 38. You can't wait till you're 28. You got to do this young. Because as someone wrote in my comments on a different video, your job will never hug you at night. Your career will not keep you warm during the blizzard. Your job is a cold mistress. It is meant for one thing. They get something out of you. You get something out of them. They give you money. You give them work. But when you go home at night and you got the box of wine and a bunch of cats, that job doesn't give a shit about you. What does give a shit about you is other people. Now, if you want to blow that, I want to have a career as a pencil-pushing HR representative. It's, it's up to you. Go for it. You know, good luck. But at the end of the day, you are number on a sheet. It is a cold, hard reality. Men have known this for decades, hundreds, thousands of years. Now, women say, well, I want to do what men want to do. Okay, well, here, here's what you have. Um, you mean my boss doesn't give a shit about me? No. This is a hard one for women to take. But if you wait as long as Eleanor Rigby, you're going to be very cold at night. You're going to want the fire of a man or a woman or whatever. Doesn't matter, whatever your thing is. You're going to want human touch. A career will not give you that. No matter how much you wish. Well, it should be this way. It should be that way. Here's the fucking reality. It's not.